The reason that I get called back and I'm booked out more than a year in advance is because the one question that I am always asking myself at every event I go to is what I'm about to do best for the event. Hey everyone, what's up? Devon here, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you five qualities that make for a great MC or host. Now, am I saying that these are the only five qualities of a great host or a great MC? No, that's obviously not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is that I have been MCing events for, you know, going on close to 20 years at the time of this video. And uh, one of the things that I've learned over the past almost 20 years is that there are a handful of qualities that if you have these qualities as a host or an MC, if you have these qualities, you are much more likely to get called back time and time again to host events. People are gonna wanna pay you more. People are gonna wanna book you in advance. Like, it's uh, these qualities are absolute must-haves if you wanna be a great host or a great MC. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. And if you like this content, uh, then be sure to like, uh, share, and check out the description because I'll have much more content for you in the description and links to other trainings and things of that nature. So let's jump into the five qualities that make up a great event host or great event MC. Quality number one, you're prepared, right? Uh, one of the things that I do before every event is I do my homework. I do my homework on the audience. I do my homework on the event. I do my homework on the culture. I'm calling the person who has hired me and I'm like, tell me a little bit about your event. I'm scripting my opening. And this is whether I'm doing in person or virtual. Doesn't matter, right? I'm always being prepared and doing my homework. And you can tell when somebody has done their homework. Like when I show up to an event and I'm referring to the audience in a way that the audience refers to themselves. Like for example, real, real life example, uh, one of the events that I've hosted in the past was this event called Lady Boss Live. And it was an event as like a women's fitness and empowerment event. And in that culture, they called themselves Lady Bosses. So as opposed to going on stage and saying, welcome to the event, because I was prepared, I went on stage and I was like, what's up Lady Bosses? and they recognize that and they're like, oh, he's calling us by our name, right? But I would only know to do that if I was prepared for the event, if I had done my homework. So quality number one of a great host or a great MC is that you do your homework on the event. You show up prepared for your openings, for your introductions and all that stuff. Um, and you, you, you actually know what this event is about and you've put in the work beforehand, right? And you don't, you're not just showing up on the day of thinking you're gonna be great, all right? So uh, that's quality number one. Quality number two, this is a big one. You put the event first. The event is not about you. Let me say that again. If you're a host or an MC especially, the event is not about you. It's all about the event. And so, like I've seen hosts and MCs get on stage and the first thing they do is they say hi, I'm, you know, host such and such, and here's my Instagram, and here's my Facebook, and here's where you can follow me online. Don't do that, because it's not about you. It's about the event. The reason that I get called back and I'm booked out more than a year in advance is because the one question that I am always asking myself at every event I go to is what I'm about to do best for the event, right? So sometimes somebody will say, hey, Devon, we're running a little bit behind, I need you to cut your time a little bit on your next introduction. Here's my question. Is it what's best for the event? And in that case, if the answer is yes, which it likely is, great. I'm happy to do it. So you always put the event first. It's not how can uh, Devon get more social media followers. It's how can I help this event get more social media followers, right? It's not about Devon's time on stage. It's how can I make sure that I'm taking the right time on stage to give the audience what they need so that everybody has a better experience at the event? So always come at it from the perspective of putting the event first and uh, asking yourself the question, is this what's best for the event? All right, so that's quality number two, you put the event first. 
quality number three of a great host or MC is that you are prepared for curveballs. Look, um, I I'll be honest with you, um, and you can let me know if this is true for you. MCing or hosting is a hundred times harder than just being a speaker. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm, I'm a host. I, I do public speaking as well. And I will tell you, as somebody who has done a lot of both, MCing or hosting is a lot harder than public speaking. Because when the public speaker who I just introduced on stage finishes their presentation 10 minutes early, that's now a curveball because as the host, as the MC, I have to go on stage and I have to fill that 10 minutes even though I wasn't prepared. So I always have to be ready for curveballs. Even though I wasn't expecting to have to speak for 10 minutes, I have to be prepared for curveballs. And so a uh, real quick piece of advice on that, the best ways that you can be prepared for curveballs or the best way and the thing that's gonna come up the most often is that you're gonna have to learn how to stall for time. I made a video on specifically stalling for time you can go watch that video, but the long and the short of it is that if you have some stories that you already have in the back of your mind that are ready to go, it's really easy to stall for time by telling those stories as long as they're event related. Also, um, one quick tip for stalling for time or, 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 or getting thrown a curveball is to go out into the audience and get the audience involved. Like I'll ask for audience takeaways and stuff like that if I get thrown a curveball, right? Um, so quality number three is that you are always prepared for curveballs. Um, that is one of the things, one of the reasons that I get invited back to so many events is because at an event, something will go sideways and I'll handle it without, you know, breaking a sweat and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I need that guy back for next year, right? Because I was prepared for curveballs. Okay. Quality number four. Sorry, my brain just farted on me. <laughs> Quality number four of a great host or MC is that you understand that speaker introductions are for the audience, not the speaker. Let me say that again. Speaker introductions are for the audience, not the speaker. Here's the challenge. Most hosts or MCs go up there and they just read a speaker bio, right? Mary Smith has achieved such and such and won this award and that award and yada, 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 yada. And the bio, the speaker bio or the speaker introduction that you're reading is all about bigging up the speaker's ego. And that's not what a great MC does. What a great host or MC understands is that that bio, that introduction is actually for the audience, not the speaker. And so what you do is you have to get the audience excited about what the speaker is going to be speaking about. And you don't do that by just listing off speaker accolades. You do that by telling the audience, hey, how many of you would like to learn about such and such that's what this next person is gonna be speaking about. She is one of the best in the industry at it because of bio point, point from her bio, third from point from her bio. That's in essence how you do introductions. Again, I have a whole another video on that. I'll try to link to it in the description. Um, it's called the one plus three speaker formula. But what I want you to understand, and some events will let you mess with speaker bios and some won't, right? Sometimes I just have to read what they give me and all right, whatever. But most events that I do, they, they let me talk to the speakers beforehand and I'll go speak to the speakers and I'll figure out how to frame what they're gonna talk about in a way that gets the audience excited and doesn't just read a bunch of their accolades because nobody wants to hear the 72 things that you did and they don't even know your daggone name or what's in it for them. So quality number four is that a great host or MC understands that introductions are for the audience, not the speaker, right? And the fifth, uh, quality of a great host or MC is that you understand energy management. Your job as the host or the MC is to manage or influence the energy in the room, right? I tell people all the time, I'm not an MC, master of ceremonies, I'm an ME, master of energy. My job is to influence the energy in the room because the more energy you have in the room, uh, then the more engaged you are and the more engaged you are, the more fun you have and the more you learn. Right? I tell people that all the time and I'll say that from stage. Uh, what I mean by understanding energy management is that being a good host or MC is not about just running out and being crazy, silly, high energy. Sometimes that can just be ridiculous. It's about understanding the right energy for the moment. Often that means having high energy, but also understanding what the event is and understanding the energy of the event and not like, for example, 
Um, when I do an event with 500 screaming women who are all best friends and there's a DJ playing and they're dancing in the aisles before I even get on stage, the energy that I come to that with is not the same energy that I'm gonna come to with a room full of, you know, 70 uh, year old people at an AARP convention. I'm just, right? That, that's not the same thing. It's not, so you can't just say high energy because I'm like, what's up? You know, uh, AARP people, let's dance. Like they're gonna be like, who the heck is this guy? That is nonsense, get the hell off the stage. So energy management and understanding energy management means that a good host or a good MC understands the energy of the event and how to raise it appropriately so that people are engaged at the right level. So I hope that makes sense. Those are my five qualities of really great hosts or MCs. I hope those made sense, if this video made sense, and if you liked it, uh, like it, share it, comment on it, all that good stuff. Um, check out the description if you want more trainings or you want links to other videos. Uh, check out Awesome On Stage and check out DevonBrown.com and I will see you later. Have a great day, bye-bye. Hey, Devon here. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and connect with me on social media. And if you enjoyed this content, be sure to share it with your friends.